Hey guys, my name is Christy. I'm the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life and a HoneyBook Pro. In today's video, I'm actually gonna take you through my booking workflow as a service provider. I know myself and I learn best from example and seeing what other people do in their business. So I really wanna give that opportunity to you to see how I tangibly use HoneyBook and automations to map out my client journey from start to finish. Let's dive in. Buckle up, are you ready to go through my booking workflow? So I'm gonna take you through just one service because each servant's service may differ and that's what we do for our clients as well when we're building out their HoneyBook processes is creating different automations templates and everything for each individual service that has a different flow. Now, I also want to lay the groundwork before diving into what my actual booking workflow is and talk about the things that you're going to need to create in order to make this automation and workflow come together. So in our system school HoneyBook course, and then with our clients, we have this workflow mapping spreadsheet where we actually map out and create their workflow in written format before creating anything in HoneyBook. This is because people may or may not know that when you go to create an automation in HoneyBook, you actually have to have all the pieces already created, the brochures, proposals, emails, questionnaires, etc. And so trying to create that in the automations instead of brainstorming it first on paper or in a spreadsheet, a document can get very overwhelming. So what we've done in system school and for our clients is we just created a basic spreadsheet that has what the steps are um, in the automation or workflow, what happens at each step, what items we need to create when it happens and if it's approval, if it needs approval or not. And then we can see how many of each we have to create, how many emails, schedulers, proposals, brochures, etc. Okay, so I wanted to talk about that for a second. And then let's also talk about some other like housekeeping organizational things. So once you actually come into your template section, this is where for all the emails, we love having naming conventions to keep everything super organized, which is our jam. So you could see here, we actually, I'm gonna show you through, we have an inquiry automation and then a booking automation. And so you could see the naming conventions, HB inquiry dash, the number of the email dash and what it actually is. And now the reason we have 0001102 is because if you just put one, two, three, four, once you get to 10, it's gonna shoot back up to the ones. So just a pro tip there for you to keep your emails organized. And then you could see the different folders that we have as well for our smart files. So our custom HoneyBook build brochure, proposals, etc. Okay. One other tip before we actually dive in is the contact form. So we're gonna walk you through the automations, but how is this possible? Because our contact form, number one, is embedded on our website. Let me show you that real quick. So you can see this is our contact page and this is our actual HoneyBook form embedded in here. So it actually looks like it's part of our website, but we never miss a single lead because everything's funneling right into our HoneyBook account. So I have another video going through the contact form and how to embed it on your website if you're interested. But one other thing here is when we have what type of project are you looking for? If you click on the gear icon, you can see that this is connected to the project type, meaning in our settings, if you click update, then you could see the different project types we have, which will then trigger different automations. So if you find yourself having to always update the project type and not knowing how to actually turn these automations on, this may be your missing link. Okay, now with that, let's actually dive in to our flows. So 
they go back into templates. We've built out all of our brochures, emails, uh, etc. proposals. But I know for myself, I always learn best by example, by someone who's gone before me and done it before. So that's what this video really is for, is for you to gain inspiration. Of course, you may be in a different industry than we are, or you may want your process to flow a little bit different. But my goal for this video is to really uncover the power of automations and how you can really streamline your inquiry and booking flow. Okay, so if I come into tools, automations, you're going to see I'm just going to go through the HoneyBook setup automations that we have so you can just get an idea of one service. So you could see here I have inquiry HoneyBook setup and then booking HoneyBook setup. Now here, this automate via contact form is where that is the button that turns this on when someone inquires from a contact form and says, hey, I'm interested in a HoneyBook setup, then this is going to trigger this automation. So let's go through this automation and then once we get to the end, I'll show you how then after I send a proposal, because maybe this person booked a call, then I will uh, manually apply the booking automation. Okay, so immediately after the automation is activated, meaning someone inquired about a HoneyBook project, it sends the autoresponder saying, thanks for reaching out to work with us on your HoneyBook project. We received your inquiry and will respond within the next 48 business hours. So this is really nice because they're getting an immediate response. They know it went through and now they have expectations that we might not be able to respond within five minutes, but that they can expect to hear from us in the next two days. Now, I don't ever wait two days typically unless I'm like out of office, but I will try and respond as quickly as possible. So what does that mean by responding? I'm gonna go ahead and check out the inquiry and then this is going to be waiting for me. If I feel that they're a good fit for a HoneyBook setup, then I have our custom HoneyBook build brochure, which has our pricing, our process, about our team, etc. And then I, it's going to send with this email. So, hey, and then it'll put in their first name. Thanks so much for reaching out to work with us on, a, on your HoneyBook project after reviewing your inquiry form. And then I will put a personal message to this person. Because I think personal touch goes a long way, people don't just want a fully automated, hey, here's how to work with us, boom, boom, boom. If you say, hey, we love working with photographers like you, congrats on launching your business, just any personal detail will go a long way. So this will say, I've attached our brochure below, which goes through everything you need to know. If you wanna book a Zoom or phone consult, feel free to do so. Let me know if you have any questions. Looking forward to hearing back. So if it's a good fit, I will add this personal message and send this over. That takes about one to two minutes. And let's talk about what these links are here. So this is where in HoneyBook, they have schedulers that you can set up. And this is where you can link it in your emails so you don't have to coordinate back and forth. Hey, I have this time available. Are you free? Boom, boom, boom. They can just click here, decide if they want a Zoom or phone consult, and then book that. Now, we have a whole other video going through the HoneyBook scheduler. So if you want more details on that, check it out on our channel. Okay. So then what happens next? Now we have our series of follow-up emails. Now note, although this is called an automation, I do not recommend having these emails as automated to go out. The reason being is HoneyBook does not know if the client has responded, if they booked a call. I mean, it does know if they booked a call, but how it's set up, it's not gonna stop these steps yet. So they're not gonna, HoneyBook can't completely read the situation, right? So how we have it is it's approved before sending. So it shows up in our task section and all we have to do is go ahead and click approve and send after checking out if we actually wanna follow up with the person. So we have three follow-up emails to start. One's 24 hours later, just bumping it back up to their inbox. One is three days after that and one is seven days after that. I'll show you a little preview of what these look like. The second one just 
you know, popping in is a, a little bit more meaty. Just following up, feel free to book a Zoom or phone consult, boom, boom, boom. The next one is much more straightforward. Hey, are you still interested or have, have you gone in another direction? And then the last one is, hey, wishing you all the best. If our services are out of budget, here are other options. So those are the first three emails, which happen in the span of, you could see like 10 days, 11 days. So we used to just stop there, but what we saw is that, especially being on directories, like the HoneyBook Pros directories, sometimes people inquire with multiple people and then never take action, right? So you could say, oh, I really need help with my HoneyBook setup, inquire with people six months later, nothing has changed. So what we actually added are three month and six month follow-ups. Now you'll see these tasks as well in between that after that third follow-up email is sent, we actually then move the stage to three month follow-up, which we have in our HoneyBook pipeline. 90 days after that, it's a three month follow-up, which is basically like, hey, it's been a few months. Did you end up getting the support you needed? Then after that, if we still don't hear back, the six month follow-up is then like, hey, just touching base, seeing if you got any help, here's some extra resources, let's stay in touch. After that, we have a task that says, okay, this is a dead lead. Let's go ahead and archive the project. They inquired six months ago. We never heard back from them. So if they want to reach back out, they can, but typically dead lead. But all the way at the bottom of this automation, we're almost done with the inquiry automation. Thanks for sticking with me here. Is move stage to book to call immediately after a session is scheduled. What are those sessions? Zoom and phone consults. So that way, if someone does get any of these emails from start to finish and decides to book a consult call, it's going to bring us down all the way to the bottom saying, hey, move stage to book call, delete automation. So now we'll move on to the next phase. Okay, so that is the inquiry automation. It feels like a lot because it is, but the beautiful thing about this is that all of it's set up for every single inquiry coming in. So all I have to do is go in and approve steps and that's it. I could go through 20 lead follow-ups in a day and it could take me about 10, 15 minutes. It seems wild, but it's actually true. Okay, so then let's go into booking. So once we go into booking, this actually happens after I have a call with them and then I decide to send a proposal. I go ahead and attach this automation. So then I have a series of proposal follow-ups. I could spare you the details on here, but basically it's just things like checking in to see if you had a chance to review the proposal. Let me know if you have any questions. Are you still interested? Blah, blah, blah. If we get through the three proposal follow-ups, now these are a little closer together, it's a seven day span, then I will go ahead and archive the project if I didn't hear back after those three follow-ups. But if the client does go ahead and uh, um, pays their first payment, it will automatically send, or actually no, this one won't, the welcome email. And the reason that we don't have it automatically send is because we typically save their project date. And so we say, let's get your kickoff call set for, and then I'll go ahead and edit this to be this the date that we agreed on. Now, actually, we're changing our process a bit that our dates are just first come, first serve, and we're gonna add a scheduler block in our proposal. So this is a great reminder to tell you that your process will change over time, and that's okay. So don't let perfectionism stop you from making these automations live and actually getting them running in your business. Things are gonna shift and change, especially in the beginning as you're testing it out, but also down the line as your process changes and then HoneyBook even comes out with new features that help with your client journey even more. Okay, so we send the welcome email, right? We get their project on the books and then we go through a series of steps that now delegates this project to our HoneyBook project manager, Antonella. 
So how HoneyBook is set up, this is kind of like a workaround where I'll then reassign the project to Antonella. She'll then add me back to the project. And then after their session is scheduled, then we're going to say, okay, change the start and end date in HoneyBook. So now all of the next steps are triggering based on project date. And then we notify our uncanny team of the new project, which are amazing copywriters who work on all of, sorry about that, who work on all of our canned emails for our clients and really bring their brand voice and vision to life. Then we go into the onboarding process. So I'm going to zip through this a little bit. Okay, hold on. Zoom one second. Okay, now I'm going to zip through the end a little bit because this is our booking workflow. So we've gone through and we've booked the client. Now from here, after we go ahead and create their ClickUp project list, which is a whole other ball game, if you guys are interested in that part of the process. Let me know and I can create another YouTube video for it. But basically we then have a list in ClickUp that has every single task that has to happen for these HoneyBook builds because they are so custom and so in-depth for our clients. And then after we set all of that up, then we send their onboarding email, which has the information to their portal, their welcome video, etc. So then once that is complete, after their session ends, we move the project to implementation because now we're not an onboarding, we're an implementation. And then actually from there, we have canned emails during the process where we're having them review assets, but because those happen at different times, we actually just send those within the project portal itself. So immediately after the project date, we deliver the final training with their recording. We kick off their 30 days of support. One week after, we send a check-in just to say, hey, how have things been going the past week? Making sure we're really nurturing our client well giving them a warning seven days left of that support period. And then seven days after that, we close out the project and we say, hey, your support period is over. It was such an amazing experience working with you. Can you leave us a testimonial? And then we move the project to completed. But now this is where you can even take it a step further. The relationship does not have to be over there. So what we also did is our last step is 90 days later, we check in on them. Hey, how are things going with your new build? It's been four months. And then we send our referral program agreement to keep those projects coming and that relationship with our clients. And so that way they can get a little payout for being able to promote DeSilva Life. And their experience that we had together. So that was a lot, but I hope that brought light to, uh, you know, this process and what our booking flow actually looks like. And just to wrap this up, I know that was really just us walking through our process. I want to go ahead and give you a visual example of what this looks like to approve a brochure, an email, etc. So let me pop into a project and give you that real time look and feel. Okay, so now we are in John Smith's project and say John Smith inquired, he wants a HoneyBook set up, here's his information. You'll see that this um, email already went out saying, hey, we received your inquiry, we'll respond in the next 48 business hours. And now you will see, let me go ahead and refresh my page. Now you're gonna see this task waiting for me. Now this is also gonna be on my home screen available for me. So I could just pop into this project, read his inquiry, and then be able to click view slash edit. Now this is where, once I click that, now this is where that email pops up, right? So this is the same exact idea for the initial inquiry, the follow-ups, the onboarding emails. That's how easy it is. You just click view slash edit. Here, I would just go ahead and delete this yellow block. I just put things in yellow when I'm like, hey, insert something here or change this thing. Um, and then I would say, we would love to help you get your photography business streamlined or something like that. 
Also, this right here is my Grammarly extension. Highly recommend. It is the bomb. And so there you go. Insert a personal note. Go ahead and send. And now you will see that it sent the email. It sent the brochure to him, which will be in his files. And then I could see if he read it. All that good stuff. So that is how easy it is to go ahead and approve those automations once you map everything out and it's running and all you have to do is go ahead and check in on your task section every day to know if you have to follow up with clients, start the onboarding process, archive dead leads, etc. So I hope this was helpful for you and in getting an insight into our actual process we use for HoneyBook setups and onboard and nurture our clients. So I hope that video was helpful for you in gaining some insight into how we use HoneyBook at DeSilva Life to book and manage our client projects. If this video was helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get all the other HoneyBook tips. And if you're just diving into HoneyBook and you really want that step-by-step -step guidance and support from me and my team, make sure to check out our HoneyBook course. I will drop the link in the description below. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.